Hey friends, welcome to Deeper Dive. We're so glad that you're here. If you're from Winnipeg, Merry Christmas, I guess. Uh, we still got the whole thing going on there. Judy woke yeah. up to a white Christmas yeah. this morning. Uh, I think this is going to pass and eventually yeah. we're going to get we're going to get spring. Yeah. Um, you know, we have been looking at the whole Brave New World series and really kind of diving into something in a, in a pretty unique way for us as a church. And, and the, the whole thought is to have conversations and begin to talk about things and what that looks like for you. And I've gotten into some great conversations with people and I really appreciate you kind of coming and saying, hey, what about this? And, you know, free speech, where's the line? And does that mean I can, you know, I can yell fire in a, in a theater and everybody gets trampled? And clearly that's not what we're talking about here is that we, we take the lessons from lockdown stuff that we learned as well as on responsibility and we're layering these things. And the whole thought is we want to get stirred to, to really think through these things. So today's message was really about discovering truth and kind of breaking out of those echo chambers that we can be in and surrounding ourselves with the same ideas and kind of not getting caught up in the mob mentality. And, you know, Judy, I think that most of us would think, oh, no, that's not me, right? Yeah. Uh, but we all can kind of get caught in that, and it's the truth. I remember there was a, a, a really good friend of mine uh, is a farmer, and he, he said he went on one of these protests, and I'm not sure what they were protesting, it, this particular thing. And he's you know, a fairly opinionated guy, and he you know, likes to say what he, he believes. He said, you know what, it absolutely terrified me because I got with all these people mm -hmm. and I started thinking things and saying things and doing things that I would have never done. He says, halfway through the thing, I had to leave. <laughs> like it was, so, he said, it was so weird. And uh, for him, it's sort of the first time he'd experienced that. And I think for all of us, you know, you may not be going out marching, but that whole thing of how do we get to that place that Pastor Mark talked about at the end, where we're really discerning mm -hmm. about what we believe and how we think and we don't fall into this, well, right, you know, left and I have to feel like I have to pick a side because as the kingdom of God, we're on a different side than that. And mm -hmm. so we really want to kind of go into that. Um, you know, all of our social media feeds yeah. are basically engineered. So we hear like they focus us to this, the stuff that we've been thinking already and getting. And so how do we begin to kind of move past that to really have a whole sense of truth? And so I, I love the thought. And, and again, we're going to kind of reinforce that. You don't actually have to buy everything he's talking about in this series, but we really want us to think, about, think yeah. about those things together. Yeah, for sure. So, Pastor Robbie, our first question is, what is the challenge that the church as a whole has to be more discerning about? Okay. Yeah. You know, I, I think... A lot of what we can look at is the best place to start when we do it is a great question is to look at ourselves rather than looking at all the other people and what they're doing uh, what do we have to do as a church and I think as I look at, at, at people's view and what they're doing this would be what I would say to that is that I think that the church is in danger of getting their identity from from things like like their politics or their gender or their color or, and, or those kind of things above and all those things are important and they have profound uh, implications for us above getting your identity from Jesus right. and I, I just think that's so incredibly important that those issues we need to speak out on moral issues and the church has an imperative to do that uh, but we need to get that in the right order and in uh, 2nd Timothy 2 Paul talks about um, a soldier not getting entangled in civilian affairs and I love that word entangled mm -hmm. right because it's it's a trap and it's a quagmire and you know I have all sorts of opinions and you know Junie I'm sure you have some opinions yeah. and we've <laughs> talked about things but at the end of the day uh, we can get entangled in those things and it's completely unhelpful for us because our identity as a Christian about who we are and who we serve and the kingdom of God, that is what's important first and we get that first and then we go to the next things mm -hmm. and, it, and that informs all of those things. So that's a great question. Yeah. Next question is, um, what does freedom of speech and voicing a joined opinion become groupthink? Or group thinking. How do, how do those yeah. things? Okay. And how does freedom of speech, group think? Yeah. Like voicing, how does freedom of speech and yeah. voicing just a joined opinion okay. become a group thinking? Okay. Yeah. yeah. And I think as, as we unpack that, 
uh, I think it really has to do with are you uh, just falling in line with the things that you're hearing or are you actually thinking through those things? Are you taking scripture and, and are you unpacking it with scripture? I, I think, and in, in we could talk about this in a whole lot of ways, but this is for me the core of it. We have the word of God, the people of God, and the spirit of God. Those are our three guiding lights that we have. Mm -hmm. And it isn't that you can't agree with people and then, oh, it's well, it's you're just, you know, mob mentality yeah. and you're just group thinking. But what you want to do is make sure that you have those three lights lined up as you're trying to understand truth. And of course, you start with scripture, you unpack it with people. And, and I actually love talking to people who mm -hmm. don't actually see the world like I see the world. And I have great conversations. I have conversations with my brother about things. And, you know, there's a lot of things that we would agree on. But every time I talk to him and we get into some really deep stuff, uh, I, I, I feel like I learn some more. I, my sons are on a completely different track than I am, right? Because they're in a different generation and stuff. And, all, and I talk to them and we can go at it, right? Right. Because we love each other. We have a good relationship. Uh, but every one of those lights helps us to really get truth right. and so we're not in that whole group thing thing and uh i mean the biggest thing is if you listen to three hours of media a day yeah. uh and you're like how is that comparing with the time you're spending in the word or spending with right. god's people or listening to his spirit you know and i i can i am like guilty when i say that i'm like totally guilty myself <laughs> of that because i'm a i'm a political and news guy yeah. i love this stuff but Am I getting fed by those other three things? Those are the real things that give me alignment in my life, mm -hmm. right? Yeah. So is that, am I getting those things uh, or am I getting all this opinion that's getting thrown and it is affecting me? I think it's a really, really great question. So you uh, touched on your sons there for a second. So yeah. um, the next question is, our kids live in a different society than we were raised in. Right. So a lot of the mindset of this individual things comes from teaching in schools. Right. So how do you teach... How do we teach our kids to be discerning, thoughtful, and faith-based? Right. Really good. I mean, and there are a whole bunch of different answers that people have come to in that yeah. to say. And, and I don't, we would not be a proponent of one particular way of doing it in terms of education. We think there's great ways to do it. Uh, some people have chosen to put their kids in a Christian school. Right. And uh, that is one of the ways to do it. And so you get that way of focusing it. Uh, we didn't do that personally. Uh, in fact, we felt like God said to our oldest, for our oldest, that he shouldn't go in a Christian school because he needed to have that, you know, think it through himself. And he was right. that kind of person. Uh, that, I mean, that is one way that you sort of focus it. But mostly what you're doing is you're teaching your kids to think critically. Right. You're teaching your kids to understand that there is a worldview that they are getting in school that is not a Christian worldview. Mm -hmm. And I think the more we can help them understand that, that there's a, there are different values that, that other people have, and maybe even people in the church have different values. I, um, there are people in the church, when we, were, when we were raising our kids, it's like, how much time would they spend on the screen? And that was like before iPads, right? right. So it was mostly Nintendo and like really slow games. Yeah. Uh, they were doing that. And, but we had to say, hey, well, you know, my Christian friends do this and this. I said, but as a family, these are our values. And, and I would really encourage you to say, as a family, these are our values. This is what we think. This is what we, when we read the Bible, this is what we get to. Um, just because is a terrible parenting idea. Yeah. You're going to feel that. And I, I, I just <laughs> do feel that. And I feel your pain if that's what you feel. But it's, this is our family. This is our church. This is, this is what it means to be a Christian and to follow Jesus. And then be really, really careful you're not wrapping that around too many things it's a core things that you want to wrap it around because a lot of christians end up fighting about you know in, in my in we we're growing up when i was growing up it was like playing cards and dancing and yeah. and thing going to movies and things like that and i thought yeah you know i i'm okay but that's probably not where the the mindset where you want to really fight on you really want to understand that that there is a way of thinking that is christian and you right. want to get your kids to think critically of everything that's outside that. Yes. Um, so how do we interact with people who have bought into the culture of offense? Okay. 
you know, I, I think there's probably a few answers to that. Is one answer would be are are they are they Christian, mm -hmm. and and are they your fellow believers, and and they're sort of overarching pieces, or are they people who are are not Christians? And I think if there's somebody who isn't a Christian, and we talked a little bit about this last week. Um, I would first start with hearing them and trying to get their perspective and really, really trying to understand them. It, it could be that they've actually, you, you get your credibility by listening to them. It could be that they've never actually heard a Christian worldview right. on things and what, what actually a Christian's view. And they just think, oh, you guys are just haters and bigots and you know, whatever. And I think you want to be really careful in, in presenting it that first you listen and really understand their perspective. Mm -hmm. And then as you begin to engage with them, uh, you can use language and connection, you know, as the Holy Spirit is yeah. helping you do this too, yeah. right? To say, hey, this is what I believe. And here's the reason I believe it. And like, not make it accus accusatory, right. but just say, hey, this is, you know, here, here's why I wouldn't find that offensive. Yes, there are some things. Hey, great point. Uh, and really what you want to do is, is have an, an ability to have a dialogue with people. The, the important thing is not to win the fight. Right. As much as I like winning. Yeah. <laughs> uh, the important thing is that you have an opportunity to have a conversation with somebody. And when you do that, you open up a potential way for the Holy Spirit to work in their lives and have truth. Right. come in and this is what pastor mark is really challenging on us here is how do we get to truth and i mean there are some people that i can have knock them down drag them out conversations with mm -hmm. right and we go at each other and but you kind of know the level of relationship that you have and there are sometimes we've crossed the line yeah. and you have to go back and you have to say hey you know what uh at the end of the day i love you way more than i love my opinion right and then I have to decide whether that's actually true. <laughs> and, and if it's yeah. not true, then I have other problems, right? Yeah. But that, that's a big thing is how you interact with, with people. And it starts with listening and it starts with not, you know, not getting angry over stuff, mm -hmm. uh, but being able to really learn from each other. Right. And, and you know, as I, um, and this is going to be a little bit longer answer. Mm -hmm. um, I was listening, when we had Black Lives Matter stuff really sort of blew up uh, six months ago, whenever that yeah. was. Um, I, I took all of the, the staff that wasn't white and met with them on in, in small groups. And I said, hey, how have you experienced stuff in the church? And you know, what have you done there? What have we done? Or what have your experiences been like? And we had a conversation together, yeah. right? And it was sort of, yeah, and I thought it was it was really good and kind of didn't know what to expect, to be honest. Like, were there ways that we have done things that weren't great? We have a great staff. They're amazing. They love Jesus. But my experience isn't their experience. Right. And so I really wanted to, and I sat down with, with all of our staff in that and listened and hear where their heart was and hear what their experience was. And I could learn a lot from that. I, I remember listening to one, one African guy saying that his heart was pounding when the police stopped him and he didn't actually know why. Mm -hmm. And it, because he had been watching so much social media that it had just got him so amped up. Right. And he had to sort of dial back on that. And I think I, I could have a lot of empathy for that, right. right? And that's not been my experience. I am not, I'm like normally anxious when a police officer stops me, yeah. you know? Yeah. And not that I'm, because I do speed on occasion, <laughs> so it's probably a guilty conscience. <laughs> uh, but, you know, at the end of the day, uh, I really appreciate having that conversation yeah. and just being able to hear. Yeah. Right? Yeah. That's right. so important that we can hear. Yeah. The uh, next question is, what would you say to someone that uses the excuse of indoctrination for not hearing about the Word of God? Uh, uses the excuse of indoctrination. Yes. That... Uh, for not hearing about the Word of God. And and you think, what do you think they're asking? The excuse of indoctrination being... Um, I think just in terms of the um, mindset too, like... Um, sorry, I'm just going to think about this here. Um that they don't want to be indoctrinated. Yeah. Okay. Good. Yeah. Yeah. And you know, I, I think that there is there's something very interesting in that is that this there are, are four different soils in in the scripture where it says you can fall on the different like a hard path, the dry ground, you know, all these kind of things. So three to four of those people, then there's the good soil. Three to four of those people aren't ready to hear to have the seed planted. 
And so, you know what? This You may not have thought of this. Uh, unless God says otherwise, you know, you may not need to do it. Right. Their soil might not be ready. Like when, when bad things happen and when there's tough stuff in their life or when there's in transitions or, you know, when people get married or they have a kid or something like that, that's when they're ready to do this. Mm -hmm. uh, it could be, and this isn't the full answer. One of the answers is it could be they're actually not ready. Right. It's not the yeah. right time to do that. They say, ah, oh, it's just that and everything. So that's answer uh, number one. Uh, answer number two would be this, is that I think there is a way to counteract that to say, hey, you know, I get that it could look like that yeah. from your perspective, right? Yeah. But here's my process in thinking through that where I have personally got to my opinion. There's a lot of things that I don't buy that I hear. Mm -hmm. Right. And, and so you can kind of diffuse some of that to say it isn't that I've just drank whatever the church says. I just drink the Kool-Aid right. and, and that whatever. Yeah. But, you know, and to help them understand, because some people may be genuinely thinking, oh, yeah, you guys are just a cult and you drink the Kool-Aid and, you know, they, yeah. whatever they say you would just do. Yeah. And to help them understand your process. Yeah. That there is a discerning that you do and there's a way and and uh, maybe you say, hey, you know, from the outside it might look like that, but here's what I do. And right. here's how I came to this conclusion personally and uh, talking about those kind of things. So those those would be a couple answers for sure. Uh, one question here is, uh, do you have any recommended uh, scriptures that can be helpful for people to remind themselves that they have the right mindset or focus? Okay. Yeah, I, I think... Uh, you know, there's a scripture that talks about whatever is true, whatever is right, whatever is lovely. Think on these things, whatever is of good report. And, and I think that's one of the scriptures that is really important for us is that we focus on those things, not just on happy thoughts. That's not what that's saying. Things that are of good report, that there is a negativity that can draw us down or there is a God focus that can draw us up. And I think another scripture for me that's really big is that we, we terms about walking in step with the Spirit. And I think as you walk in step with the Spirit, I, I'm spending my whole life yeah. learning how to do that. Yeah. Right? That I learn how to, you know, don't be drunk with wine, but be filled with the Spirit. Right. And, and there's, there's this whole juxtaposition, and that, that is really about control. When you're drunk, you lose control. When you walk in with the Spirit, you under, are under God's, the, you're under control in your mind, your will, your emotions. And so those are, those are two scriptures that really help me focus on God and who He is. And really, a lot of that is really to be God-focused. In, in the things that you're doing. And those are in any of the scriptures that lead you to that. And uh, for me, the probably the biggest one, and this might sound a little bit odd for me, is actually Psalm 23. Mm -hmm. And I what I do is I take some time and I, I just focus, the Lord is my shepherd. And I, and I begin to think, because there's scripture that's meant to be didactic, where you, you get an understanding and a flow. And there's other scripture that's meant for you to enter into it in that way. And so I, I, he leads me beside still waters. And I put myself in that place of still waters. And God often brings revelation by his spirit when I'm entering into that. Yeah. Uh, and where the, the, the other scripture with God's thoughts and his ways are not my ways. And I begin to think about those things. I could go on for like a mm -hmm. long time on this one, but there's some thoughts. Uh, one question here is, what kind of mob mentality are we experiencing in Canada? Okay, um, you know what, I, th I think we are not, actually not far from the states mm -hmm. in terms of the way the things that they are experiencing. We're, we're nicer because we're Canadians <laughs> and, and we don't, you know, kind of go at it. But there is a sense in which I, I think how we deal with history yeah. is is a big one and you know this can be a little bit contentious but um you know in the bible god often told his people to like hey when they cross the jordan put a you know put this this marker of stones up mm -hmm. so you remember yeah. and, and i i think what you know what pastor mark was saying and, and i noticed some of the chat on the sermon we all got caught up in dr seuss not the issue um, what, what really we're trying to look at here is to say, how do we learn from our history 
And, and how do we uh, really become thoughtful about it? And I don't think this is an easy question. Right. Like, I, I don't agree with the whole cancel everything. Right. You know, I also don't agree with just not being thoughtful about it and not teaching our kids the whole story. Right. Um, you know, when I, I had a great history teacher um, and he said, John A. McDonald, hey, founder, you know, railway, all this kind of stuff. He was also a drunk and he was also somebody who had terrible racial views. So when I see, and this is, you know, just me, when I see and think about John A. McDonald, I actually have the, that picture and the things that he did and how he treated Aboriginals and, you know, all of that kind of stuff. I think we're just way wiser right. in our world to think it through. And, and I think God always challenges us to look at the past and right. to learn from the past and to say, you know, as a family, what we do is uh, we crank out our photo albums and our guys are in their 20s and 30s. They will still look at photo albums and they will talk about and will bring out the things of the past and we'll do stuff. I have one son who has a, I won't go too far on this, so I don't out him, but he has like a negative thing. He will know and remember every negative story of everything that happened in our family. And it's a bit annoying actually. And uh, we'll say, well, how about some positive stuff? So yeah, there's lots of positive stuff, but this is super funny. And uh, you know, at the end of the day, I think that whole, that's one of, that's a big one is learning from our past mm -hmm. is, yeah. is one of the things. And I, I think there's also that whole sense of, you know, in moral issues where we really have want to speak into it that everybody's just said, well, everybody just lets let everybody do what they want to do. Yeah. And uh, that you and I as a church uh, have uh, the right and the responsibility to, to really wisely speak into moral issues in our in our day and we can and it's okay for us to talk about gender we need to do it with grace right. it's okay for us to talk about abortion uh we need to to understand and, and have ability for people one of one of the great ladies of our church uh works in an organization that helps young ladies yeah. who are making that decision and i think those kind of things and, and not stand in judgment of people yeah. uh those are the kind of things that i think as canadians that we, we really can be focused on together. Okay, and one last question is, um, so we talked about our history, yeah. but what happens if our history is different than someone else from another country? So I think you've already kind of touched on this, like they've probably experienced different circumstances. But, right. Uh, I think we can go back to thinking about let's listen, right? Like right. listening and then um, hearing them out. Um, Right, and and I think I was I was listening to um, a pastor this past week, and he said, you know, they were they're in the states, and they have a ton of African American, and they got their all all their staff together, kind of like we what we did, and um, he said, you know, after they were finished, and it was like painful stuff, some of it, and some of them just repented and just said, hey, you know what, I realized that because that history wasn't mine, is that you and I have never we were best friends for like. 10 years, we never talked about racism. Right. And there was silence. And there, there wasn't that. And he said, he feels like the biggest thing that we can do to break that is storytelling. Right. Is that I want to hear your story. Yeah. And I want to hear how you've experienced things. And I want to hear what your culture has. And I think it's huge because all of us come with... Right. Uh, our history and what you yeah. said is absolutely right. The most important thing is storytelling here. And, and um, I think Tony Evans, mm, yeah, well, I think it was Tony Evans who said, if, if you want to break down some of the barriers, you hear each other's stories. And then what you do is you get together with someone who is different than you and you go serve someone less fortunate. And, and I, I thought that was very interesting because I think that's sort of the, the next level after you've listened and done those things is you remember we talked to, we started with talking about that our identity as Christians has to be above everything else. Not that yeah. this isn't important, but it's above it. And that's where we reinforce that, that identity that we have right. as Christians, where we say, Hey, you know what? At the end of the day, you and I are brother and sister, you and I are brother and brother, and that is going to be above everything else. So let's do something together to build unity right. because the world's way is divide and go into camps and, you know, right and left and black and white and, and male and female and, left and and all these kind of things god's way is saying in christ there is first who right. you are in christ right and that's a, a huge thing hey I, I just want to end with that thought of yes. the word of god the people of god and the spirit of god those are the ways the the three lights when they align 
Uh, that's how you get truth. Uh, I love this conversation. Folks, have more conversation. Drop me an email if you want, aubrey at churchoftherock.ca. Love to connect with you more on this and continue to have these things. I think we have one more message left in this. For some of you, this has been painful. Uh, for others of you, you've gotten a little bit mad. Uh, hey, you know what? At the end of the day, remember who we are, right? When we're together in this, we want to have these conversations. And I want to learn from you. And hopefully we can all learn together. God bless you. Have a great week.